Hey guys, it's Amy here and today I bring you my top books of 2016. I realise that we are very late with this video, I was unwell and things just didn't go to plan but we're here better late than never. So today I have eight books to share with you, my favourites from 2016, not books that were published necessarily in 2016 but definitely my favourite of all of the books that I read. So on my last video you'll know that I'm also doing a giveaway, the giveaway winner will receive a book of their choice but also a choice of the selection of books that I'm going to show you today. I loved all of these books, I believe most of them I gave five stars to, some of them were four stars but they just stuck with me more than other five stars did. Just jump straight into it. I don't have a particular order. I'm just going to go from non-fiction to fiction because I have a number of non-fiction books this year. The first one I'm going to talk about is Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. This book was my first five star non-fiction read of the year. It blew me away and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since I read it and I've recommended it to so many people in my real life and on booktube because I mentioned it in my like midway point favorite of the year video as well. It's basically Susanna Kalen documenting her own experience of going from being a very sane person, a completely normal person as you would say, to being on the complete other end of the scale and within a month she went from being very very normal to the doctors believing she had some form of schizophrenia, that she was just in a completely catatonic state, her mind deteriorated, she wasn't able to speak, feed herself, write, she wasn't able to do anything that she regularly did, she became completely just catatonic basically, like she, she ended up nearly in a coma. For the majority of that month the doctors had absolutely no idea what was wrong with her, they were doing tests for so many different things, they couldn't work out whether it was just psychological, whether she was kind of doing this to herself in some way or whether it was like overworking and, and drinking too much, like one doctor kept saying like um, maybe she's just partying too hard and working too long. And none of the doctors seemed to know anything or have any idea of what could be wrong with her and it got to the point where they were considering putting her on a psychiatric ward and just kind of leaving her there to rot. It was such a gripping read because the whole time you were just thinking what the hell is wrong with this woman like surely they're gonna find out they can't just like leave her like this. I'm not gonna spoil it for you like obviously they find out what has happened to her because she then went on to write this book. One thing I would say is if you're not a big reader of non-fiction this is a fantastic book for that because it is so easily digestible. Susanna's job is in journalism so you can see that skill in writing coming through in the book. It is wonderful, honestly. Go and pick it up if you haven't already. Next in my pile of non-fiction books we have In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. This is basically Truman Capote detailing the events that happened in 1959 in Kansas. Four people were murdered, a mother, a father and two of their children at their farmhouse in a very small town where things like that just don't generally happen and this book details every element of those murders. It goes from the perspective of the people living in the town. It, you see the beginning of the book starts with the people who actually were murdered and you kind of read through their perspective. As the book progresses you read through the perspectives of various detectives who are working on the case and trying to discover who murdered these people. And probably the most interesting element of this book and the bit that I love the most was that you read through the perspective of the murderers. So you read chunks of this book following the murderers, where they are, what they're doing after the murder and how they're planning on escaping and getting away with it. So compelling because the whole way through you're thinking to yourself like this book is reading like fiction, like you have to remind yourself that these characters they're real people, people that were or maybe even still are alive and that just blew me away. The way this book completely wrapped me up and made me feel so like pulled into the story that I felt like it was a fictional thing rather than true life events. It's just amazing. If you're a lover of true crime and you haven't read this one yet, you need to get on it. Next we have a war related book. If you were with me throughout most of 2016 you'll know that I read a lot of books set during World War One and World War Two. This one is World War Two, and it is Night by Ellie Wiesel. This is one of those books that you read and then for a little while afterwards like you just can't pick anything else up because it just affects you so deeply. This is Ellie Wiesel talking about his time in World War II when him and his family were moved from Hungary to Auschwitz and he lived and worked and suffered 
at Auschwitz for three years and he managed to survive. I'm sure you can all imagine the torment and the horrific things that Elie Wiesel and his family had to go through living there. Elie Wiesel was actually the only member of his family who managed to survive. It's one of those books that scares me so deeply and upsets me so much that people can do these kind of things to one another and it's, oh god, I just can't even get my words out to say how angry these books make me but also how important I feel they are to read because if we as a generation don't remember these things and, and what happened then it's so much more likely that those kind of things will happen again in our future and I would never want to put anything like this on anyone else and it's just yeah I honestly implore you guys go and pick it up I hope that made sense because I feel like I was rambling a bit fourth and final non-fiction book for this video I can't believe I had so many non-fiction favorites this year but that's just how it is it is Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer you guys probably aren't surprised to see this one. I have mentioned it a few times and kind of speak about it a lot on Instagram and stuff. I became a vegetarian in April last year and I have a feeling I'm going to make a video come April this year about my vegetarianism. If you guys would be interested in seeing that, do let me know down below. This book is basically Jonathan describing his kind of progress, his journey from being a on and off vegetarian most of his life to becoming a full vegetarian and wanting that for his children. At the beginning of this book you learn that Jonathan has had a child and that he wants to make sure that whatever food he gives that child is good food and wherever it's come from it has come from an ethical source. And so that is what spurred him on to do the research and look into all elements of the meat industry and all of those kind of things. And he looks into every single aspect of the meat industry and how a piece of meat will get to you on your plate and everything that has happened to it before then. He also looks into the environmental effects that the meat industry has. He also looks into fish farming and factory farming and slaughterhouses and ethical farming if there is such a thing. All of these things make up such a brilliant book. One that I think everyone should read even if you are a meat eater. If you are a meat eater surely you owe it to yourself to know where your meat comes from and what you are putting in your body. I think it is a very important book for everybody to read. So moving on to my favourite fiction of 2016 and firstly we have a classic and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This one basically follows a young unnamed woman who marries into a estate. She marries this man, he takes her to Mandalay which is where he lives and she is living under the shadow of his previous wife who died in a boating accident. The name of this previous wife is Rebecca and everyone at Mandalay absolutely adores Rebecca. Everybody thinks the highest of Rebecca Rebecca. So our protagonist is basically trying to fight her way through and make a name for herself and actually live her life to the fullest and not feel like she's just stepping into Rebecca's shoes. It's fantastically written and it has some really kind of dark and wonderful turns. There are some top-notch characters in this book. There's one lady named Mrs Danvers. She is the servant, kind of the leading servant at Mandalay and she really takes a disliking to our protagonist. I think this one is brilliant, especially if maybe you aren't a big reader of classics or you haven't really read any classics before I would begin with this one because it is so easily readable and it's incredibly gripping so yes I would highly recommend. Next we have probably the most gripping book of the year that I read the one that I went to work and was constantly thinking about and couldn't wait to get home again and read it I mean all of these were like that but this one was definitely one that was in the back of my mind the whole time and that is The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. This one follows the story of a girl named Melanie at the beginning of the book you learn that she is in some sort of prison type thing every morning a sergeant comes into her room with a gun and she gets strapped down by her neck and her hands and she is wheeled by a wheelchair into a classroom full of students who are also all strapped down like her. And this has happened every day since Melanie can remember. She can't remember her family or anything like that or where she's been before. You then see the bigger picture of this all and you learn that Melanie is living on a kind of military base which is highly protected and all of the people on this base are kind of normal people and all of the people on the outside of the base are known as Hungries. Hungries are essentially zombies, people who run after other people and eat them and Melanie is living within this military compound and she is being protected. I don't think it's really a spoiler to say because I think it's pretty obvious but Melanie herself is a Hungry, that's why she's being strapped down to prevent her from biting anyone. So the whole kind of crux of the story is why are these children all being kept at this military base, like what are they doing to them and the whole story unfolds from there. It gets very dramatic, very gripping 
exciting, very kind of thriller-esque, and not something I would usually read and enjoy, but I loved it. Again, the characters in this book were fantastic. I absolutely loved Melanie. This book really reminded me of The Host by Stephanie Mayer, which is one of my all-time favourite books, so if you love that book, you should definitely try this one because I think you would probably like it as well. My penultimate book, or books really, because it's a trilogy I want to mention, which is the Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb. If you want to enter the giveaway and you want to choose this one, I will send you the first book in the trilogy. I don't think I can afford really to send you the whole thing. The first book is called Ship of Magic. I will put a picture here because I've lent it to my granddad to read, so I'm hoping he's enjoying it at the moment. The trilogy as a whole, over the course of the year, gave me so much enjoyment. It was so fun. It's an epic kind of fantasy series which I really immersed myself in and fully became involved with all the characters. The whole story was just brilliant and I loved where it ended up. Like, I'm a big lover of final books and trilogies and how authors kind of manage to pull everything in to make a fantastic ending and I thought this ending was fantastic. The general kind of story of this trilogy revolves around the live ships, which are ships that have figureheads on the front that have come alive due to the fact that generations of families have died on the decks of these ships. So the figureheads come alive and then they are able to talk with and guide the ship to make it faster or better or fight other people better and all these kind of things. It just makes it a better ship than any other ship. One of our main characters is named Althea and her family's live ship has been taken from her. She expected to become the captain. That job was taken from her and the ship was sailed away and she is fighting to get it back basically. And not only does this story follow follow Althea, we follow pirates and sea serpents and dragons and magical creatures. It is wonderful, it is so like encompassing, like it's one of those stories that you just immerse yourself in and that I absolutely love. So if you are a big fan of fantasy, definitely go and pick this one up. And the final book that I want to share with you today, it's another war book, it's another classic, it's one that I think you'll probably guess, it is all Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remarque. This one is set during World War One, and it follows the story of a group of German schoolboys as they are essentially taken from the classroom and drafted into the front line to fight for Germany. It is an incredibly touching novel. It just, it made me think so many things and it affected me so much. Like, I know that this is going to be one that I think about for the rest of my life and reread again and again because it was so fantastic, so beautifully written. When I first reviewed this, I said the same thing and I repeat it now. When reading this book, I had to keep reminding myself that I was reading through the perspective of German soldiers. I was not reading through the perspective of English people. If you didn't know, I'm English. Obviously all the books that I read are in English, I can't read in another language, so this book has been translated into English. So in my head when I was reading it I kept forgetting that these people were German. Because I was reading it in English I was just thinking, oh you know, that they're, they're English people fighting a war. But no, they're not, they're German people. But what I got from that was the fact that it doesn't matter if they're English people, it doesn't matter if you're reading through German people or French people or any other people's perspective, they are all the same perspective. All of these people are needlessly dying, all of these people are being drafted and sent forward by their governments to battle against each other, all these young boys were dying and it was just so heartbreaking and it, and it didn't matter what country you are from, they're all experiencing the same thing, they all have families at home, they all have people who love them, who are missing them, who cry when they find out that they've died, and it just, like, that struck me more than anything else was the fact that it didn't matter if I kept forgetting that these weren't English people. Ultimately, all around the world, all the time, during all wars, people are dying and that is affecting the people that love them, and that, to me, just just everything about this was just fantastic. I loved it so much. If any of you guys have read anything else by this author, I would love recommendations down below because I want to pick something else up this year, but I'm not sure where to go from here really because this was so good. So there we are. Those were all my favourite books of 2016. I'm so glad I finally got this video filmed. I didn't want to do it while I was feeling poorly because I wanted for you to see my enthusiasm for these books and I hope that has come across because all of these books were phenomenal. A link to my previous video for the giveaway will be at the very end of this video, so if you want to 
to have a chance of winning one of these books plus one of your own choice then do go ahead and do that. Let me know in the comments if you read any of these books and what you thought of them and what your favourite books of 2016 were because I would love to hear it. As always I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything I've mentioned today down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye! Bye.